Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here for another AVRC tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing on where we left off last time. Today we're going to be talking about the RX side of the serial transmission bus. Uh, remember last time we talked about the transmission side, so today we're going to be talking about setting up code to allow the ATmega328P to react in some way to messages we send it over serial. And in today's case, it's going to be turning an LED on and off. Fairly straightforward. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. I have the old code, the code we had written up last week, the txserial.c file, because we're going to be borrowing a lot from this file. Because, well, it's we set up code to handle the setup for the UART in the TX video, so we just basically need to do the same thing for the RX. So I'm going to copy these few defines. So the CPU, frequency, the baud rate, and the baud rate calculate, all the same, because, again, we're trying to set up the serial again, but we're just setting up the receive side this time. So all these numbers are still needed, even though we're not doing a transmission. So we're going to copy that, and I'll copy over the uh, baud rate register, where we... Oh, yeah, did control... Oh, no. Control C, there we go. Copy over that. So this way we don't have to retype anything, we don't have to recode every, anything, it's all good. So that's all good, that's all the setup we need for the serial bus. So let's set up the receiving thing. I'm also going to just copy over two macros I have. These are useful macros for you to have. These are just set bit things, we'll use them for turning on and off the LED. So Let's go ahead and open up the data sheet, see what we need to do. So, like I said, all the setup's been done in the TX video. If you want to see the setup again, watch that video. Just going to be setting up the RX this time. So, we can ignore the control status A register, because, again, not much there we need. There are some error things that you might want to take note of. We're not going to be talking about them in this video, mainly because during the setup for this, I wasn't able to generate any of these errors, no matter how hard I tried. But all these are just flags that you can do with a simple bit check. Fairly straightforward. So we'll just move right on to control register B. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable the receiver. So UCSR0B equals one shift left into the RX ENO. So we're going to enable that. And then we can just borrow again this, which is the C register, all we're doing is setting up the parity. So if we go back into the data sheet and look at that, ignore the USART mode select because we're not tweaking anything, we're staying in asynchronous USART. Parity mode we copied over, same parity, this needs to be set up for both the transmitter and the receiver. Stop bit we can leave alone, you don't actually need to set this up for the receiver, it's only necessary for the transmitter. And the character size, which again we're leaving uh, this is actually what we set up. This is what I copied over, not the parity stuff. This has to be set up for both, again, the receiver and transmitter. We have this set up for an 8-bit data frame, and ignore all that. So, that's the setup we have. So, there we go. We're done. We've now set up the receiving side of the serial, or, yeah, the receiving side of the serial bus. So, as you can see, it's incredibly straightforward to set it up and it's very easy to mate transmitting and receiving together. So we could call the video here, but it's not doing anything interesting. So let's make it do something interesting. So let's make it respond to our commands. So we're going to use a similar system that we used for the transmit, but it's going to be used to receive instead. So I'm adding two methods, uh, get car and peak car. I'll just build this fairly quickly. We're going to be using a buffer system, like I said, like we did with the transmitter. So we're going to define the RX buffer size to be 128 bits. And then we're going to set up the buffer, RX buffer size, and then uint8, RX read position. So this is using the same cyclical queue system we had for the transmitter. It's just going to work in reverse. So instead of putting things into the buffer, we're going to be pulling things out. And obviously, we're going to need to set up some sort of interrupt. So we're going to include, don't like that include, include avr interrupt.h. 
And there we go. So let's look at the interrupt. Uh, to set up the interrupt, if I use page up instead of scrolling, there is an interrupt here. This flag is set when there are unread data in the receive buffer and cleared when the receive buffer is empty. This can be used to generate a receive complete interrupt, which is set by this bit here. So any new, any time new data comes in and is cleared by the AT mega being that there are no errors, this uh, interrupt will fire. So what we have to do is set up that interrupt, which is handled in the B register, and I'll space that to make it nice and neat like I did last time. That's R X C I E zero. There it is, and I got that semi second semicolon. And we'll just set up the direction register one shift left into port B zero. Okay, and obviously we're going to need to turn on external interrupts. So let's write the ISR. So ISR, USART, RxVect. So this will fire every time we get new data into the data register. So Rx buffer at the Rx buffer write position is going to equal UDR0. Now you'll note you're paying attention, that this is the same register we used to transmit. It's a directionally based register, so anything you put into it is transmitted and anything you read from it is received. So depending on which process you're doing, reading or writing, depends on what data you're going to get. So because we're reading, that obviously means we're pulling from the Rx side. So we'll increment the Rx write position, and then if the Rx write position is greater than or equal to the Rx buffer size, then rx write position equals zero. Now, I'm going to mention a caveat to my system right here, this loop system. This is an issue for receiving. If you if you receive too many characters and it actually and the write position overlaps the end, comes back to the beginning and then reaches the read position, then you're going to have an issue. It's not going to read it as there being new data. So I'm not going to do it in this system, but take note that you do have to be aware that there is the possibility that it can overlap, come back to where you are reading from, and it could read this as a, there's no new data, which you'll see when I write this method, void uh, get car. So I'm going to set up a character called return, or ret, and that's going to be set to a null character. And then I'm going to change it if the Rx read position does not equal the Rx write position. This is that caveat. So if it comes back and makes this case true, then it's always going to return a null character, even though there is data technically for you to read. So you're going to need to come up with some clever way around that. What I'm doing in this code, it's not really necessary, but you should, again, make note of that. So if the Rx, if there is a misalignment, meaning there is data to be read, then ret now equals the Rx buffer at the Rx read position. Then we increment the read position. And then if the Rx read position is greater than or equal to the Rx buffer size, then Rx read position equals zero. So we reset that, to make sure I reset that properly. And there's one more method I had set up, peak car. And this is slightly different than get car, as you will see. And we'll set that to a null character. If rx read position, that's not what I wanted. If rx read position does not equal the rx write position, return is still going to equal the rx buffer at that read position. But I'm not going to increment the I'm not going to increment the read position. All I want to do is know what the character on the top is. And I didn't do that down here. So get car gets the character that is next to be read, but then increments the read position. This just lets you know what the next character to be read is. So you can use this for uh, stream parsing or yeah, stream parsing basically. So you don't always have to pop off the character and be forced to move on to the next one. You can just get a little sneak peek at what the next character is. It's a general system you see with streams like these. Okay, now we'll go into this while loop. 
So we'll say car c equals get car. If c equals 1, uh, we'll set port b, port b0. So we'll just turn on the LED. Else, if c equals 0, we clear that bit. Uh, no, port b, port b0. And there we go. So if we run this conflicting types, what did I do wrong? Go away. Oh, uh, that should be car. There we go. And if I check that one more time, I call that void as well. Whoopsies, slip that up. And that should be everything. Oh no, a return with no value. Oh. I'm slipping today, guys. Just run that one more time. Everything's great. Okay. So now I'll just go ahead and upload this program to the board. Make sure this is the right file. It is. Program this up. Okay. And I'm still using TerraTerm because TerraTerm is a great piece of software. So I'm going to type on the keyboard, but you're not going to see any zeros or ones appearing. I don't know if I can make that a setup, but I don't think you can because I've been doing this, working with this software for a little while, and I've never seen the ability to show what I'm typing. So I'm going to pause for a second, set up a little external camera so you can see what's going on as I hit keys on the keyboard. Okay, so what I've got here is this LED is the one that's going to be turning on and off, and what you should see here is a little light blinking on and off, which indicates that the that the um, AT Mega is in fact receiving uh, serial data. I'm just using an uh, F USB to FT 232RL breakout board here, so it's got a little light, which will indicate every time this board receives some message from uh, the computer via USB. Now I looked around, poked around TerraTerm, and apparently there is a way to set up a way for you to see what characters I'm hitting. Those of you interested, it's set up terminal local echo. So if I hit a 1, the LED does in fact come on. If I hit a 0, the LED goes back off and you can see the little LED on the uh, FT232RL board blinking on and off, or at least you should be able to, as I hit the keys. So I am in fact sending it data and it's not just turning on and off at a random time and I'm syncing it up to hitting 1 and 0 on my keyboard. So it is actually working, so there we go. So that's it. Pretty straightforward to set up uh, serial communication, both TX and RX. Like I said, it's very easy to just mix these two codes together. It's just oring the two registers together, really. You could combine these codes extremely simply with uh, very little hassle. So that is it for this video. Uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.